player video and in this one we're going to look at the CZ1 envelopes. Now these envelopes are the most unique and flexible envelopes that I've seen in a synthesizer. If you've seen anything which is more flexible then uh, please let me know. I'd be interested to see that. Um, at the time it was quite revolutionary and I'm surprised that people didn't make more of a fuss about it. Um, but I was certainly impressed when I got my CZ101. Before we look at the CZ1 itself, let's review how basic analog envelope shapers work and also some of the developments that happened in envelope shaping leading up to the CZ1. So if you look at this diagram, it shows the basic ADSR envelope. So you press a key down, and then there's an attack period which is determined by the amount of time or by the rate. It goes up to a maximum value which can't be changed and then it comes down to a sustain level which can be changed and when you lift the key then you have a release time or rate where the note fades away or something changes over time. It doesn't have to be that. It could be the filter shape, whatever it is. So this was the standard on all analog synthesizers with perhaps some variation in that you could trim it down to just having attack and decay. Um, and in this circumstance, then the decay time and the release time were um, tied together. Now, what's really good about this particular system is that it's simple. You have four controls so it's easy to demonstrate, it's easy to understand, it's easy to show people how it works. Um, but it's limited. That's, that's the trade-off. You know you can put this on a front panel, individual controls for each one of these and that's great and it works it works well. But that's all you can do. You can't do anything else with it. When Yamaha came up with uh, the DX7, they sought to um, expand this. So let's have a quick look at the type of envelope they did. Right, so this is from the DX7 manual itself. And you have an attack portion. They don't call it attack um, as such. But then you have, you set the rate you set the level, then you set the rate of a second section and the level of the second section. You then set the rate and level of a third section and the third section is actually the sustain. And then when the key comes off you have a fourth level and rate. So the problem with this system, although it gives you more flexibility, it also is more complicated. If you wanted to implement that by using controls, individual sliders on in a piece of hardware, then you're looking at eight controls to do that. And that's that's okay. That, I mean, that's fine. But then if you think about the DX7, you've got an envelope for each operator and then you've got one for pitch as well. That's a lot of controls just to do envelope shaping. Let's have a look at the CZ1 solution to this. So th this is a picture from the front panel of the CZ1. And when you initially look at this, you think, oh my God, this is even more complicated than the DX7. Um, and yeah, potentially it is. So we're looking at eight stages here. I mean, look at the number of up and down. You've got five before you even get to the sustain and then another three after you um, complete the sustain. So, you know, your key is on there, your key is off here. And OK, that's crazy. There's all kinds of stuff that you kind of have to do. Um, so if we go back then to the DX7 envelope, you, you have the issue with the number of controls. But the second issue is you have to set them all. 
that's a lot of programming time. So you've gone from a point where you're programming a synthesizer and you have four controls to set an envelope. You then have to go to eight controls to set an envelope. You have to do it six or seven times individually, bearing in mind all the push button things that you have to do on a DX7 to get to the various parameters. Um, that's a lot of work and sometimes you don't need all of those stages of an envelope. With the Casio solution it's really quite different. The beauty and the strength of the Casio envelope is you can choose where the sustain is and you can choose where the endpoint is. So you can go straight from on stage one to sustain and on stage two to end. And so you then have the choice. You can have an eight stage envelope if you want, or you can have a two stage envelope or a three stage envelope. It's up to you. You vary it, you change it. You can make it work like an ADSR. And that means that when you're programming, you don't have to set every single parameter because you can literally just chop it off halfway and then it simplifies the whole thing. Perhaps I need to just quickly run through the controls um, first of all. To change the value we go here. But under the envelope you always have a rate and a level. And to get from rate to level or from level to rate, you need to use the cursor control to go back and forth. So there's rate, there's level, change the value. To get between the steps, you have to use the page button, page up, page up, page up, etc. And then at the envelope point, you have the sustain and the end. This is probably quite a good place to start actually. Um, electric piano type sound. We've only got one oscillator in use, so we're only really worried about these. With the CZs, you have an envelope shaper for each section. So there's an envelope shaper for pitch, there's one for the waveform itself, i.e. the harmonic content, and then there's one for the level. And then of course that's times two because there's two oscillators, so you've got the six envelope shapers all together. Let's start with the level. I think this is probably the most logical one. So if we go to the envelope button on DCA1, you can see that it goes to step one. So step two, step three, etc. Let's see, if I take the end off here, right, the end has now gone to step eight, which is obviously the last step. Let's see if we can get it to do something different then. So at the moment we have a short sound and then everything decays away. So let's just do something really simple. What we can do is at step one we're just going to put sustain in. And now it sustains. Take sustain off. and it doesn't sustain. Um, we can then go up a step. So the level's at 66, so we'll put the sustain in there, but the rate is very slow. Okay, so we want this to go faster, so we get a bit more of a click. And then if we go up, and we can have rate 15, but we want it to go to the end. End is always level zero, at least for the amplitude. And because the rate's 15, the sound goes on for quite a while. So 
So the next thing is let's make that a little bit clearer and we're going to go to the tone envelope if you'd like to think of it like that. Put the sustain there. Now what I want to do in this particular case is to put this up to full. So I get some more harmonic content. Reverb on. Okay, I've taken reverb off now. Right, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to introduce some more interest using the envelope. You can get some kind of echo effect, what's similar to an echo effect going on there. Um, and then what you could do is on this one, make it longer or something, maybe 20. So then you've got a bit of reverb and echo. So what I've done now then is um, I've changed the line selector so we get two oscillator ones. They're both going to have exactly the same envelopes. And Uh, I'm just going to want to just change the sounds up a bit. So let's have a quick look at the waveform as well, actually, while I'm at it. So yeah, we're looking at some pretty basic stuff here. Uh, let's go for a second waveform with my favourite fizzy one. And I think you get the, the basic idea there. Um, obviously you can do similar things with the second oscillator, um, but do them slightly differently. So they interact in a sort of unusual way. Um, but that's going to take a bit of time to work on. So I just wanted to go through the basics here, really. You may ask yourself, well, why not just use digital delay? And the reason I didn't use it at the time was because I didn't have one and uh, I couldn't afford to get one. So <laughs> this was a sort of cheap alternative. It's as simple as that. So even though it's button presses, it's actually relatively easy to navigate all this stuff. Yes, that's, that's really getting somewhere then. Let's play with the pitch envelope a bit. Level 66 is an octave up. And level 78 is two octaves up. Let's try and go right up to the top. We are then going to come down to a sustain of 66. When we release, it will go back to zero. Wow. That takes a long time.
Yeah, I like the that sort of attack sound that you get in on that. It's it's really kind of interesting. Um, so let's just slow that down a bit here then. So I think that deals with the envelopes in terms of what to do after the sustain. The other aspect is what to do with them before. Now obviously you can do anything you want, but one of the things that Yamaha sought to do was to introduce a multi-stage attack so that you could better emulate brass instruments. Brass instruments have this strange attack where they go up about two thirds and then come down again for a bit and then they go up again to get to their sustain. So I'm back with this relatively plain waveform and first thing I want to do is to give it more harmonics. Okay got a bit more fizz there that's good. I think I would just do it a little faster. Now the sustain's gone, I can actually hear what I'm doing. Okay, stage up. Put it on 175. And I'm going to do the same with the um, DCW as well now, so something like that. Yeah, so you're getting that sort of that sort of FM brassy type sound. Yeah, so it does kind of work. Um, I think it's probably more useful on the DCW than it is on the DCA, perhaps. But I think with the DCA you get sounds which are something else completely different so yeah that's quite good. I've never tried doing like three blips in a row I mean that would be kind of interesting but again that's something else you could do you could really really sort of do some strange things with the attack and it could have some really interesting effects. <laughs> So that's good. So that's it for envelopes. Um, there's obviously a lot more you could do, uh, but uh, yeah, I can't cover it all. Uh, the video would just go on forever if I did that. Um, but I mean, hopefully there's enough there to uh, whet your appetite as it were, and you can try a few things yourself. So if you come up with some interesting ideas stick them in the comments because um, I'd be interested to keep trying things out. Um, so yeah that would be useful. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an extra part which will include ring modulation, noise modulation and a few other parts which just haven't really been touched on. Um, so um, and then I'll get to the performance controls as well. So I think we're looking at another two parts then. So obviously, thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you managed to get this far, then well done again. You know, it's kind of gone a bit longer than I was planning. Hopefully catch you on the next one. Until then, goodbye.